Hey guys, welcome to the latest Guaranteed Fitness podcast of awesomeness. Now, apologies for this being a couple of days late, but it's been a, a busy festive season. I hope you guys have had a fantastic time and are all ready set now for the new year. Now, we have encountered a slight problem in today's podcast. We recorded the interview for it the other week, so uh, Matt will be on that interview asking questions and so on. But unfortunately, at the moment, Matt is down in London ready to celebrate New Year's Eve tonight. Now, don't worry, guys, all is not lost for this introduction and for the rest of the podcast because, unbeknownst to Matt, I secretly took a lock of his hair the other day and have had specially cloned a replacement Mattbot. Now, hopefully this is all work, but Mattbot should work in exactly the same way as the real-life Matt. So let's just see how he's doing today. You okay, Mattbot? Yes, John, I am fine. Thank you. How are you today? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Cheers, Matt. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you had a good Christmas? I had an excellent Christmas. Thank you. Cool, cool. And am I right in thinking you got Emma lots of personalized photo products with your picture on? Yes, that is right. And did she like them? No, not particularly. Well, I did kind of warn you that might happen. So anyway, um, what else do you know, Matt? I must say, John, you are looking particularly handsome today. Okay, easy, Matt, easy. Just can we just get on with the podcast for now, okay? Welcome to the Guaranteed Fitness Podcast of Awesomeness, where you'll discover hints, tips, and ideas on how to transform your lives and bodies, and how to become what you always wanted to be, with your hosts, Chief Ninjas, John the Guru Hall, and Matthew Can't Spell Nicholson. So, guys, right, uh... First of all, we've got this week's question of the week. Ask John and Matt. So it's a question from Fiona McDougall, uh, one of our ninjas down at Guaranteed Fitness Maxfield. Matt, would you like to read out the question? Okay, John. Fiona has asked about exercises that can be done in your bedroom, stroke hotel room, when you are away from sessions. Yeah, excellent question, Fiona, and it's one that people ask us quite a lot. Uh, for those of us, uh, for those who are members, you hopefully notice on the website we do have home workouts. They're online workouts that can be done anytime, any place, with no equipment. All the information's on there. A, a, a description of what needs to be done for that particular workout. A video demonstration of it, and you can actually stream or download music where the timing is set to that individual workout. So for those that are members, that's on the Guarantee Fitness members side, just under the exercise tab. But what we'll actually do for everyone out there, because I appreciate a lot of people are looking to get in shape in the new year and either haven't been able to join us because they've missed a cutoff for our January trial or they're perhaps nowhere near us, we're going to put that on the show notes to this particular podcast. So just go to guaranteefitness.co.uk and pop the email address in there. Or if you're already on the list, you'll see the link in the emails we send you out. And we'll put a link there to where you can do these home workouts. Cool, right, and we've got next the thing of the week. So, Mattbot, are you ready for your thing of the week jingle? Yes, I am, John. Okay, go for it, Mattbot. What have you got? The thing of the week. Mattbot, that was particularly disappointing, to be honest. I was hoping you'd be better than the real life Matt, and if anything, even worse than him. And I actually can't believe I'm going to say this, but I'm looking forward to the real life Matt getting back next week. So this week's thing of the week is another webinar because we're getting such fantastic feedback from them. We've had uh, tons of people on them and watching the replays afterwards. It, for those that haven't been on a webinar yet, it's a fantastic interactive way to to, to find out new stuff. Basically, uh, they're an online presentation taken by Matt or myself or both, in which we go through various things. Uh, you can see what's on our screen on our computer. So the advantage of that is that you don't need to leave and go somewhere. You can be sat there like Kay often is in in her pajamas. Uh, watching the webinar and you can interact as well so people can ask questions throughout ask us to go back a bit recover something put their own two cents in or what have you so the next webinar we've got is called make your comeback feeling 10 years younger in just 10 weeks so it's a lot of easy simple things that you can implement into your life and we're going to cover really how best to do them rather than just giving you the information that's on Tuesday, the 7th of January, which is, uh, what's that, from when I recorded this, it's next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Anyone that wants to get on that, just go to guaranteedfitness.co.uk forward slash webinar, that's W-E-B-I-N 
A R. And just pop your details in there and get yourself registered. It's all completely free. It'll just send you all the details and information that you need. Cool. So we've got this week's interview and Matt Bot. Who's the interview with this week? This week's interview is with James Largy. He is a personal trainer from Manchester, and I have seen on Facebook that he often has pictures with his shirt off, and he is a very attractive man. Uh, yeah, okay, Matt, Matt Bot. I'm sure that's true, but. We're probably going to be looking more at the uh, the, the content of the uh, what he's got to say uh, for himself. So uh, record this of the week. The real life Matt is on this interview. So let's get to it. Okay, guys. So today's podcast interview was with a trainer called James Largy, who we know from Manchester area. And I've known James for a couple of years through work I've done with the PT Academy. James has got a fantastic fit camp company called Frontline Fit, which is doing absolutely great things in the Manchester area. And just recently, they've started to roll out some new training stuff, which is really exciting. So I thought James is a great person to get on the podcast, firstly, to share a little bit of his experience, his great insights into how people can start to transform their lives and their bodies, and also to hear a little bit about this new training thing he's got going on. So, James, first of all, just tell us a little bit about you, uh, your history, how you got into fitness, uh, and what you're doing now. Cool, no problem. Um, basically, fitness, uh, sports performance, nutrition and health, all those sort of things have always been something that I've been massively fascinated with. Um, I grew up competing in your typical sports such as football, basketball, boxing, um, all the poor kids sports really. Um, and then I went on to university to complete my degree uh, in sports uh, and exercise science. I used what I'd learned through my education process so to speak and then applied it basically on myself and my clients in a in a group setting which of course spurred the growth and somewhat generation of one of the companies um, I own which is based in the northwest as you've mentioned um, specifically Manchester uh, Frontline Fit so yeah that's the outdoor group training company awesome cool how long ago did you set up Frontline Fit James um, it was 2010 so almost almost running four years oh nice one nice one and what sort of people do you work with there what sort of uh, your normal members um, to be honest John it's a it's a it's a wide range of people really reason being is that Frontline Fit um, as a company is no longer just uh, an outdoor group training company uh, we now have several different services that we provide uh, the 12 week strength camp is one of our latest additions to uh, FLF, which is mainly focusing on adding as much lean muscle mass uh, safely, effectively, and of course, naturally in the shortest time possible. Um, I mean, it's a plan of which I used myself previously, and I still use now to some respect with my one on one clients to specifically gain strength whilst adding as much lean muscle mass as possible. Yet, the, uh, the, the 12 week camp. Uh, which is different to the fit camp because that's only six weeks and it's outdoor. It's a different st style of training altogether. It's, it's basically based on your individual goals. So depending on whether you want to gain one kg of lean muscle mass uh, or 10 kg of lean muscle mass or whether you want to add one kg to your one rep max deadlift or 100 kg, uh, whatever you want, uh, just as I'm sure you guys do, we basically uh, sit down uh, and we devise the correct plan of action. Yeah, of course, of course. One thing we're really big on at Guarantee Fitness as well is, obviously, people need to know what to do training and nutrition-wise. But we find, really, when most people come to us, especially probably with you, James, it's not necessarily the lack of knowledge that's a massive issue. You know, most people know they need to do exercise and eat better. But it's the problems they're having adapting those things into their lifestyles. They're the self-limited beliefs they've got, the habits they've got, etc. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you find uh, from that sort of point of view? I mean, for me, um, I mean, specifically mentioning with the strength camps, because that's something that's quite hot at the moment. Um, we're already sold out for all five camps in January. It's 15 places uh, per camp, and we're basically outgrowing ourselves quicker than what we originally anticipated. But we specifically, I mean, we, we, we focus more on performing some of the things that are more like complex lifts, more advanced training strategies than most people uh, are basically used to yet due to the diversity, coming back to what you said earlier about what type of clientele do I have, we have to still kind of do it in the safest but also the most effective manner as possible. After after all, I mean, it's, I suppose you've got to look at the fact of it's all good looking strong but, um, if you're weak as a mouse and it's pretty crap. Yeah, uh, of course, yeah, of course. But in terms of, for, for me personally now and for the business, specifically Strength Camp again, it's, it's key for our our clients to remember that 
it, there's no one size fits all for diet training or supplementation. Uh, therefore, it's the trainer's job or duty um, to figure out what will work best for them, really. Yeah, yeah, of course. One, one great point you made there, James, I like that. You mentioned that obviously your camps are full now for January. Mm-hmm. And myself and Matt have had an interesting observation recently. We, we filled up January a few weeks ago, so we've actually closed it down now for, for new work, people guys. coming in. Yeah. Uh, and you can actually see the so your, your average personal trainers now are just starting to market for January. And mm. I, I know come sort of early to mid-January, they'll be hammering buy my stuff now on Facebook because... Yeah. Basically, they haven't built something that people are going to want to commit to ahead of time. They're just going to yeah. wait till people are desperate and yeah, I mean, for anything. Yeah, I mean, it's that. I suppose it's a lack of experience. I mean, uh, myself and, and you guys, we've, we've probably got a little bit more experience than those guys who are making them sort of mistakes. However, it goes back to the old saying, you know, um, fail to prepare, uh, prepare to fail. It's the same sort of thing. We've been advertising the Strem Camp since the beginning of November um, and basically it's sold out within November. Uh, so we have already got a waiting list for the April strength camp because it's a three-month uh, camp that we run, which is 12 weeks. Nice one, Mr. Yeah. Cool. We were talking a little bit as well about difficulties people face. You know, what sort of stuff do your guys face? I mean, the first come to you, uh, whether it be strength camp or your other camps there, again, like I said, it's, as we agreed, it's not just the information that they need, but it's, it's the challenges they face implementing that into their lives. So with your sort of guys, what challenges do they face and what do they find difficult about making these adjustments? I mean, for me... Um, hmm. you know what, it's horrible to say this. I wrote a status actually about this on Facebook a couple of days ago and it got over 20, 20 odd different individuals commenting on it and over 100 likes or whatever, basically because it was real talk. Um, one of the most difficult tasks for me as a trainer, as I'm sure you guys have come across, it, uh, come across is to basically uh, getting the, the client to understand that people uh, people around them who they're close to, who they, who they might call friends or family, you know, loved ones, um, they want to see them fail. And it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's really hard making them realize, um, but it's bound to happen at some point, whether it's to do with jealousy or competition, or maybe they feel threatened because their partner may leave them um, because they're now, in effect, potentially increasing their value, right? Um, so having clients understand that, the odds of keeping those friends and family once they have positively and progressively changed their lives is is potentially slim, uh, unless of course the friends and family are travelling the same path. I think that's the most difficult thing for me personally. Yeah, they're definitely. That's, that's one thing that we talk to our members about, and that's really why we term what we do as transformations rather than just you know weight loss or toning or, or yeah. what have you, because yeah. it's a whole life and body transformation. It's not just a change to the amount of body fat you're carrying around on the outside of, of your body. Mm-hmm. And one great expression, I think I actually mentioned this about the first or second podcast that I really like, it's the whole concept of failure is best endured, shared. Now, this was actually introduced to me first when I was an area manager for fitness agents, mm-hmm. actually in uh, with regards to personal trainers, about how a lot of personal trainers try and drag down other personal trainers by you know, mm-hmm. talking about oh, it's not a good area for training, is it? You know, so-and-so's got all the clients, the gym mm. charges too much rent, etc. cetera. Mm. Because if all the trainers there are struggling, then it validates their opinion that it is just impossible. But if another yeah. trainer's been successful, it makes them question that and, and look, in the, look in the mirror. Exactly the same with people when they're changing their lives. Yeah. If your friend at work successfully changes the way they eat and live their life and loses weight and looks and feels a lot better, mm-hmm. then that really blows out of the water your excuses of it's too expensive, I don't have time, people who live around here can't do it, and all that sort of stuff. So people, unfortunately, do want, subconsciously, their friends, family, and loved ones, as he said there, to fail, which I think it's just something that we have to accept is part of human nature. We can try and manage that process. Uh, Some people will come along on the journey. And again, one of my earlier articles uh, this year was about leading your group or leaving your group. So hopefully you you can pull that group along with you and help them transform their lives and change as well. But yeah. sometimes, you know, leaving the group is for the best. Yeah, most definitely. And it's even more painful when it's somebody close to you. I mean, I've had clients in the past who, um, you know, they've got in tremendous shape. They're feeling so positive about the life. Their, their work is thriving. Um, their training's thriving. Their nutrition's thriving. Their energy levels are thriving. They're now finally sleeping. Um, and just unfortunately, the relationship with their partner, boyfriend or girlfriend, husband or wife, uh, doesn't seem to be working out. Maybe I, I I can't quite put my finger on it because it's different for every single individual. 
Um, but yeah, it's a shame sometimes when when that happens, and it's it's kind of hard to make your client realise that this this is something that they may have to accept. Yeah, we heard a really bad one recently. Actually, I won't give the exact phrase because mm. it'll give away who I'm talking about. But one of our members reported back to us that she's lost. She didn't have a lot of weight to lose, but she's lost it, and she looks mm. absolutely amazing now. And she went home and was talking to her husband about how she looks, and I think she's got a new dress or something like that on. Uh, and he likened her to essentially a female bodybuilder, which yeah. is insane because she looks nothing yeah. like that. Um, yeah. She looks amazing, but... That, is a, that just... is a massive hate for most women, especially now the fact that there's so many more women now um, realising the, the benefits of weight training specifically. Yeah. Um, and I think that's one of the, the, the key things. that the, Another key difficulty that I come up against when I, when I first get a, a new client or a new strength camper who comes along and I say, right, we're going to do some heavy weights today. And they look at me as if to say, uh, you know, I don't want to look like such a body or I don't want to have muscles. And it's, it's, uh, it's kind of painful when your loved one will, will um, you know, link you towards be looking like that person who they just do not want to be. And it's really... Yes, yeah. 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 We, we, we mentioned this again before on earlier things. But what, what do you say to people like that? Because say, say like your average housewife has got a few stone to lose. If they are concerned about looking yeah. like a female bodybuilder, what would your response to that? I mean, for me, it's all perception. So, I mean, you could have it's it's perception with everybody. It's, it, I've come across a lot of people who suffer from certain eating disorders, and this was the biggest eye opener for me. Um, it's however you perceive your body to be, um, or even specifically in that case, however your husband perceives your body to be. And it's just a case of, you know, if this is the physique that you want and your husband doesn't want it, then it's a case of, right, who's more important, or what's more important, your happiness or his? Uh, yeah, and if you can't accept you being happy for the, the physique that you've worked hard to get, then, you know, maybe he's not the right person for you. As simple as that, really. Yeah. And also to point out as well that they're not actually going to look like a female bodybuilder because mm. female bodybuilders generally take steroids, human growth yep. hormone, etc., and do a very specific type of training to get that look. Yeah. So you have I a mean, housewife. In, in you both more so no knowledge on this due to the fact of, you know, further educating ourselves on hormones, such as the, the knowledge that we may learn at, you know, polyquins, biosig, and things like that, where you can basically realize that it's, it's near enough impossible for women to get that way uh, yeah. unless they are taking, you know, anabolic steroids. And the thing I always say, if it was, if it was that easy to look like Arnie, mm. I, I'd have looked like that for the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If only. Yeah, and I'm a man, I've got you know, yeah. however many times more testosterone and growth hormone than yeah. the average woman has. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, some women uh, do manage to, you know, to get leaner and to look more muscular, so to speak, as, as other women who, who, who are doing exactly the same uh, exercises, the same reps, the same tempo, all that sort of uh, stuff. But it's just a case of, yep, genetics will allow that to happen. Um, but also, you've just got to realize what it is that you want deep down. And if it, if this is the physique that you want, then go for it, you know. And again, the point we always make as well is these changes don't happen overnight. So if at any point you do start to think, right, uh, I'm as big or as toned or as whatever as I want to be now, you just yeah, go into all the maintenance change. phase. You don't keep it. getting bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger. Yeah, adapt it, change it up. If there's something that you're unhappy with, you know, you, you, you specifically target that. I'm constantly now trying uh, in my next phase of training to target weak areas, areas that I'm not not happy with and it's so easy for people to go in the gym and just train what they enjoy doing all of the time they're the most favorite parts or you know the strongest parts for most guys that you, you know yourself you see them uh, go in the gym and they're doing the you know the bench press and the bicep curls and stuff and the, the, the neglect squats and you know the deadlifts and all the stuff that they're not so fancy or even some of the complex lifts which can be uh, highly beneficial so of course, yeah. for me it's always about adopting uh, changing the training program up making sure that you you're hearing it from a different angle. Yeah, cool. Uh, right, talking a little bit about food and what have you, because mm -hmm. um, I should imagine you probably have a similar sort of thing. Most people, when they come to us, have really what the government have told them to eat, to be honest. Mm -hmm. it's, it's cereal or toast for breakfast, maybe porridge with a mm -hmm. orange juice, some sort of sandwich or soup or something like that for their um, lunch meal, and then an the evening meal, maybe like a meat and veg or a pasta-based meal or pizza mm -hmm. or something like that. What sort of changes do you generally recommend on like a more like blanket general um, approach? Okay, that's on a blanket. I would say the 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 diets or the 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 how well, can I put it the eating style or diet that tends to work best for most of my clients. Again, everything is individualized as you're aware, um, but paleo seems to be something that that um, I'm more leaning towards. Um, but for me, in terms of changing people's 
um, eating patterns and and all of that sort of stuff. I would I would definitely say implement the the famous Poliquin meat and nut breakfast or of protein and fat breakfast as as you can call it. Um, obviously because you're getting your uh, um, healthy fats in there as well. Um, you obviously uh, the meat's allowing for a slow and steady ra- raising uh, blood sugar. Um, and yeah, I mean, for me, the, the, the main thing is making sure that my clients from day one, uh, get a healthy breakfast. And as soon as we, we get the healthy breakfast, we just start to focus on one thing at a time. And yeah. I think it's something that so many people, um, don't realize specifically with habits, you know, you've got to change things one thing at a time. I think like it's, uh, especially coming up to January now, so many people, the reason why they fail is because they try to change too many things at once. Um, and you know it, it's it's silly really to to kind of use this analogy or this quote, but Rome wasn't built in a day. And it's important to remember that um, we are what we repeatedly do, and and we become uh, the same as those of you know mentioned earlier who, of who we surround ourselves with. Uh, which is why I feel specifically group training and frontline fit has been so successful really for gaining results of which people have failed to get on their own in the past. Yeah, definitely. A couple of points there, yeah. I mean, one, uh, it's actually polyquinism, so I'm sure you probably heard it when you went on this course as well, is you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And mm. that's why we find our group situation works so well. People are just almost dragged along by the group a little bit, whereas yeah. if they yeah. surround themselves with people that are going to take them in the opposite direction, they get pulled in that direction instead. Exactly, John. I mean, for me personally, my clients, um, my group training clients, uh, when I first started the fit camp, um, we're getting better results than my one-on-one clients. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit of a long story how we started, really. But that I think the group training style is so um, underrated or you know um, undervalued. And even to, to some respects, if you have a, a strong or knowledgeable training partner, you know, just the, the, the help of being around somebody who's doing a similar sort of thing as you. And again, the same as you, only making one one maybe two changes at a time i think that's uh, that's doable and that's the, the the path to success so to speak that's that's definitely a big thing yeah the, the changing one habit or so at a time because people exactly like you said they try and change 10 habits mm. and then as soon as they fail on one yep. they just give up on the whole thing whereas if yep. you successfully change one for a, a number of weeks or so or a month or two and then you feel confident with that and you've got that as a new habit in your life you can start working on the other one and people often put off by seemingly how long that's going to take they might think mm-hmm. it'll take a whole year to change all my habits yeah. But the thing we always point out is every time they tried in the past, they've spent a whole year then not changing their habits and not achieving what they wanted to. Yeah, I think it's just the the whole education process in, in terms of teaching the clients during their during their uh, transformation journey, so to speak, which is the is the is the ticket to long term success. You know, making them aware that 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 cake or that Hagen Daz ice cream uh, they will be able to have and enjoy, and it won't necessarily affect them in a negative manner. At a certain stage of their training, you know, when once they're lean enough, uh, once they're obviously uh, more insulin sensitive and all the rest of it, they can they can enjoy all these fancy treats, which they feel as though at the time they will never be able to have again, and therefore they should jump off the the side of a bridge. Yeah, yeah. Just to go back to the breakfast I mentioned there a minute ago as well. Uh, I obviously did a biosig and Polyquin recommends the meat and nut breakfast, and we recommend as, as you said more of a. Definitely getting that balance, so getting the, the healthy fats and the proteins in there. And to us, that's one of the biggest wins people can make. It's not necessarily the easiest thing, but mm-hmm. for something that might yeah. only take a couple more minutes, it, it's a huge difference. I've other people just I mean, one, change, of, sorry. one of the main things I would say to anybody who wants to implement the meat and not um, is do what I do or do what I tend to tell my clients to do. And when you're making dinner or tea at night, cook extra. Cook extra meat. Yeah. Basically mm-hmm. bang it in the fridge. If you want to heat it up in the morning, so be it. A lot of my breakfasts are meat and eggs. Well, that's not necessarily to say that all of my breakfasts are uh, meat and nut or protein and fat. You know, there is the, the odd breakfast where I'll go back to your traditional, you know, porridge or we'll go back to maybe some protein pancakes or something. And, you know, I'll just constantly keep it mixing up. It's the moment that the, the time your diet becomes the same and it becomes... Uh, the same thing every morning or the same sort of style is the same uh, as when your training's the same all the time. It just becomes stagnant. You get bored. You lose motivation. Before you know it, you just fall off the wagon completely and, you know, it's just all out of the window. So it's really important to keep mixing it up. Um, but you've got to remember the whole uh, ratio. You know, a little bit of bad isn't necessarily a bad thing unless you're in a bad place. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Cool. So uh, you just mentioned a second ago about educating your clients. Uh, yes. I know, James, you've been working on quite an exciting new thing about training, pers- sorry, educating personal trainers. So let us know a little bit about that, will you? Yes. Um, well, basically, uh, in my opinion, I'm sure it's in your opinion also, you've been in the teaching game for a while, the quality and the knowledge um, and even the experience of the average personal trainer is extremely poor. Unfortunately, becoming uh, a personal trainer for most is the easy part, as you're aware, um, yet being successful and, and making a living is where the real you know, challenge lies. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, as I say, you're aware. We now basically live in your, you know, your fast track crash course style culture, which, which uh, many hopeful trainees are given the bare minimum of knowledge, really, um, and are qualified, in my opinion, uh, too quickly and launched into the workplace extremely, extremely unprepared. Uh, which is probably why sixty uh, percent of newly qualified PTs give up or fail within you know six months of qualifying. I'm not actually sure where that exact statistical uh, reference or I've, I've seen different stats all over the place. But yeah, the yeah. It, it's it's none, none of them are good stats, shall we say? Yeah. Yeah, it's a well-known <laughs> fact. Um, I'm not too sure where it comes from, but it's uh, it's scary to think about. You know, uh, after being a newly qualified uh, PT coming into this field of work, and to be honest, guys. This awareness of the, the fitness industry's current condition is the entire reason why uh, my newest uh, business venture, Future in Fitness, um, has been created and launched after, uh, I would say, around 18 months of collective work between myself and some other you know, really amazing people who, who we have on board delivering aspects of our ultimate diploma now. Cool. Uh, so tell us a little bit about that, because I've seen some of the names you've got involved. That's quite yeah. a selection, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we basically recognize the flaws within the teaching approaches. Uh, every possible reason, excuse, and roadblock for not uh, making a successful career in the fitness and, and health industries is covered within our courses, seminars, um, toolkits, uh, mentorship programs, basically making sure that all of our postgraduates' chances of success are extremely high. Uh, when they when they start a new career, I mean, one of the big things for us as well is that we've made it mandatory to uh, for our students, all of them, to attend the additional seminars, courses, and workshops of which aim to vastly extend the learner's level of knowledge through the through the teaching of some of the UK's top leading experts. You know, as you, as you've noticed, we got Ben Coomer on board, mm. who's an exceptional. Uh, nutritionist. We've got Phil Learney on board, who's who's uh, an exceptional uh, PT in the strength and conditioning game. We got John Hardy on board, who's uh, massive in the the functional uh, anatomy style uh, area of fitness. Uh, and basically, a lot of big players in the fitness game, even big fitness companies. We've got Future in Fitness uh, teamed up with Financial Fitness, uh, Wolverson Fitness, um, LSF PT. Uh, Frontline fit, obviously. Uh, we just got a load of load of uh, great guys on board. I'm really, really excited. Yes. Yeah, cool. One of the particularly good names you got there, James, obviously, is, is Phil Learney. Now, Carl, one of our coaches over books, actually went on one of Phil's <sighs> seminars down at Stoke about about six weeks ago, and mm-hmm. he said his mind was absolutely blown. Uh, Which Carl, one was it? Uh, it was the one at Caveman Training in Stoke. I'm, I'm not sure the actual title of it was, um, and I know he definitely covered sort of sure. use of statins and uh, that sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, Maybe the, the nutrition one, which I just got. Oh, it, it was definitely nutritional, yeah. I'm not sure what the actual title was. And, and yeah. Carl's actually been on statins since he was 12 years old. Mm. And recommendations of, of doctors. And basically, from what he's learned from Phil, he's realized that actually statins are one of the worst things he could be on. Yeah. Uh, so Carl's sort of on his own journey now of looking into what the best thing is for him. Yeah. And uh, Phil actually trains Ollie Foster, one of the guys we've got lined up for the podcast the next couple of weeks. And yeah. For what he's helped Ollie do to his body, which admittedly was, was good before, but it looks mm. absolutely amazing now. And anyone that can make another human look like that mm-hmm. obviously knows what they're doing. Yes, yeah, so you've got a hell of a collection of people lined up for your uh, your team there. Yeah. So I'd probably say any any, any guys that are listening to this podcast who are looking to get into the fitness industry, then Future in Fitness. Uh, I've just checked the website. Yeah, futureinfitness.co.uk. Yeah. It's probably one of the best things you can do to get into it. So check that out. There's all the details on, on what they do on there. Awesome. I mean, for me personally, um, speaking to the majority of the guys like yourself who are in the industry and have been in the industry for a while and more than likely been through the trenches and been through a, you know, a, a tough time uh, maybe generating clients or maybe actually just getting your head around who are the right people to follow um, you know, and learn from, this seems to be the, the 
the diploma that PTs always wish they had done, you know. Um, and I think that's that's what we kind of made sure that we wanted to go along that line. I mean, uh, myself, um, a lady called Helen Schutzman, who's a, a lead lecturer at MMU University, uh, and a guy called Ben. We, we decided on who we felt was right to to uh, carry the course and, and basically put our students on good stead from the get-go. And, and that's pretty much what we've done. We've, we've included everything within the Ultimate Diploma. Yeah, I'm just actually looking at the Ultimate Diploma page now as well. So if anyone wants to check it out, it's on the Future and Fitness website. And it's basically like a, a little table with ticks of the various things that you could possibly have as part of a, a diploma. And then showing all of the training options out there and which bits they include. And the Future and Fitness one is just a... It's a big, long list of ticks down the side because it's got, it's got pretty much anything. I, I'm looking at that now and I can't really think of anything that a new personal trainer would possibly want on top of that. That's the one. Looking at um, added years ago, the YMCA one, I think mine was more close to four grand, the one I did. Yeah, yeah, they started to bring that, them down in price now. Yeah, obviously. and uh, the, the one that you're offering is just the, the best I've ever, I think I've ever seen awesome. in any PT course ever. So, yeah, if any PTs out there listening, check, check that out. But awesome. you do that primarily because YMCA is one of your favourite songs, isn't it? It's my, it is my favourite song. I know all the actions. <laughs> uh, we need to see a YouTube video of this. <laughs> That's a good idea, actually. We'll do some videos later. Yeah, we'll so do, we, we'll do, do that. the trophy next podcast. Right? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's brilliant, James. We're going to do that, definitely. Definitely. Cool, right. We've got some fantastic uh, content there. So for you guys listening there at home, hopefully you've got some useful ideas about, again, how to start making the changes or continue with the changes that you're already making. Uh, the whole one thing at a time, changing one habit at a time, things that is a big thing we've gone about for the last few weeks but hopefully you've got some more stuff out of that mm -hmm. so james thanks for your time there really appreciate it no problem and, uh, guys. Yeah, see you soon buddy excellent have Cheers, a great day. take care all right, excellent interview there with James. Hopefully you guys listening at home got some, again, useful ideas, just different ways to think about things, different ways to approach some of the changes you're making uh, in your life uh, ongoing in the new year. Matt, you enjoy that? I thought it was excellent. Yeah, it's good, wasn't it? Yeah, nice one. Okay, cool. Right, that's it for today, guys. Just as a quick recap there. Uh, Matt, Bart, do you want to cover what we uh, went through today? Yes, John. I, first of all, told you you were looking very attractive. Yeah, yeah, you did, didn't you? Okay. You are still looking good, and I think you should wear tighter shirts. Okay, Matt, what? Right, can we crack on? Or... Okay. This week's question was exercises that can be done in your bedroom, hotel room, when away from sessions, from the owner, McDougall. Yeah, and uh, we, as I mentioned there, Matt Bott, we put a link on the show notes on the website. It'll be going out in the email series uh, with some home workouts, 12 home workouts that people can do in hotel rooms or at home. This week's thing of the week is the webinar, How to Make Your Comeback, Feeling 10 Years Younger in 10 Weeks. Yep, yeah, and that's on the 7th of January. That's next Tuesday, 8 p.m. You can register for that at guaranteedfitness.co.uk forward slash webinar. And that's basically it, guys. Matt, who have we got for next week's podcast? We have an interview with Mark Howarth, one of our ninjas at Guaranteed Fitness Macclesfield, who has lost 28 kilos of body fat and looks amazing. Yeah, that's it. That's right. We're going to interview with Mark next week, and we've got a couple of exciting thing of the weeks and questions to cover. Uh, but that's it for now, guys. Have a great new year. Yes. Happy new year. Thank you for listening to John and Matt Talk Nonsense today. See you next time, dude.